This right here is the entire lineup of new M3 MacBook Pros with every possible chip configuration for a total of six machines that we've been testing extensively for the past month. And this video will serve as the ultimate performance guide jam packed with tons of charts that feature all six on screen at the same time. This took insane amounts of time to put together and it's meant for you to be able to save this video for future reference to see all of the performance differences. So hit the like button and subscribe if you appreciate all the effort. Here are all the specs for the regular M3 chip machines on screen, including the eight gig and 16 gig models, as well as both the base and upgraded M3 Pro models, and also the base and upgraded M3 Max models that we have been testing. So let's jump right into this crazy performance comparison. First up, we have the SSD transfer speeds, and as you can see, the M3 Pro and Max models are quite a lot faster than the regular M3s because they pack in more SSD NAND chips. Jumping into single core performance and Geekbench 6, they're all around the same with a slight edge going to the M3 Max models because they support high power mode. But when testing web browsing performance with the speedometer 2.1 benchmark, they're all basically within margin of error, except for the eight gig model because it doesn't have enough RAM to keep up. As for multi-core performance, you can see that it scales fairly evenly as you go up with the upgraded M3 Max being almost two times faster faster than the M3 chip, basically making it one of the fastest mass production chips in the world, competing with the very best desktop chips from Intel. Now, if you look at multi-core score per dollar, using the best chips in the smallest 14-inch MacBook Pro sizes, the best bang for the buck is the $1,600 base model with it going down to the worst value with the upgraded M3 Max because it forces you to upgrade the RAM to 48 gigs and the storage to one terabyte so you lose more raw performance value. So then we tested the more realistic Cinebench 2024 CPU rendering test, which factors in thermal throttling. So we actually tested the 16 inch models for some of the higher end configs and here, we can see the score increasing linearly once again. But this time, when you look at the score per dollar spent, the upgraded M3 Max and the 16 inch chassis performed basically just as good as the others, except for that crazy good value 14 inch base M3 Pro chip model. So it's still worth spending the extra cash for heavy CPU rendering workloads. We then tested web design and Figma using a project from 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California, and here it's definitely not worth upgrading to the M3 Max chips with such a small difference that the M3 model would actually be just fine to buy. But now moving on to some real world performance tests that can actually take advantage of multi-core performance quite well, we have Logic Pro Music Production where the M3 Max models significantly outperform the rest in terms of how many tracks they can handle at once. But fair warning, the 14 inch M3 Max got crazy loud in terms of fan noise while maxing out the CPU in this test. So producers are much better off getting the 16 inch size since it packs huge fans and heat sinks on the inside for better cooling. Now for the programmers out there, we also tested the Xcode benchmark, which has been fully reworked from the ground up with Xcode 15. And here we're actually getting very noticeable improvements, moving up to the better M3 Pro and M3 Max chips, down to only 72.5 seconds on the M3 Max, which is crazy fast and will surely help you save idle time. It was literally so fast that it almost matched up to the fully upgraded M2 Ultra Max Studio, but it's in a portable laptop running on battery power, which is just insane. But as far as bang for your buck, I would probably go for one of the M3 Pro models, especially since right now, the $2,000 M3 Pro 14 inch is on sale for $1,800 on Amazon. And by the way, I'm gonna have links to all of the Amazon sales for all of the machines down below. And now with all of those CPU tests out of the way, let's jump right into graphics performance with Geekbench 6's GPU test. Here, we're seeing some pretty massive jumps when you go up to the M3 Max chips, since a huge focus with these ones is GPU cores, with 40 cores on the M3 Max, 
being 3.25 times faster than the base M3. And now looking at score per dollar using the less expensive 14 inch models for all of the chips, since cooling doesn't really matter in this test, we can see that you get better value per dollar as you upgrade to better chips, especially the best of the best upgraded M3 Max, which also includes 48 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of SSD. So this is already a killer value for graphics users. So then I tested a real world gaming benchmark, which is 3D Marks Wildlife Extreme Unlimited. And here we saw even better results with the more expensive chips, with the 40 core M3 Max now being 3.9 times faster than the base M3. So if you're thinking of also doing some gaming on the side of your main graphics work, the best M3 Max is the obvious choice if you can afford the insanely high price tag compared to Windows-based gaming laptops. That brings us to Cinebench 2024's new GPU rendering test. And here, the new app wouldn't even allow the eight gigabyte RAM M3 model to run the test. But besides that, we see basically the same results here with massive performance jumps as you upgrade to the M3 Max models, making them so worth it for rendering. So we tested exactly that in Blender 4.0 beta, which now supports ray tracing even with the eight gigabyte RAM model. And here we got a massive performance improvement with the base M3 Pro MacBook Pro being over twice as fast as the base M3. And keep in mind, it's only $1,800 on sale on Amazon, which is a killer deal. But the M3 Max models just took it to the next level, rendering this party tug project in around 30 seconds, almost twice as fast as the M3 Pros. And now getting into photo editing in Lightroom Classic, there were some big discoveries here. With the base model M3 MacBook Pro taking forever to export due to not having enough RAM, and a simple upgrade to 16 gigs got us down to a minute and six seconds. But it got even worse when we did our multitasking test with five web tabs open, making the eight gigabyte M3 model slow down even more and much more with 20 web tabs open, taking over five minutes long. So I'm pretty much gonna recommend everyone who cares about performance to get 16 gigabytes of RAM for $1,800, or better yet, seriously just buy the M3 Pro model for $1,800 on Amazon since it comes with 18 gigs of RAM, faster SSDs, an extra Thunderbolt port, dual fans for quieter operation, and an extra supported external display. Now moving on to Final Cut Pro video editing, I exported our five minute 4K HVC project, which is the most common format people shoot in, and the M3 Pro made no difference at all because it has the same encoders as the M3, but the M3 Max actually has dual encoders, so it's much faster. And yes, I also tested the brand new 10.7 update of Final Cut, and it only marginally improved the export times by four seconds across the board. And finally, in the craziest export test that we have, which isn't limited by encoders, which is Canon R5 8K RAW, the 16 gigabyte RAM upgrade made a massive difference for the M3, and the 16 inch M3 Max dominated the rest of them due to all of that graphics performance and the cooling system. So with all of that said, here are my recommendations. If you care about performance, do not buy the eight gigabyte RAM M3 model. Instead, I'm gonna recommend the 14 inch M3 Pro for 1800 on Amazon for basically everyone because it gets the best bang for your buck for a great low price. Now for those who aren't afraid to spend a ton of money on the M3 Max models in exchange for the fastest performance you can get, I'm gonna straight up recommend the upgraded M3 Max model with 40 GPU cores because it's above and beyond everything else. And it comes with 48 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD, which are both good solid choices. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe above for all of that hard effort. And definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.